Hello reformers and welcome to A Clash of Kings 2.2. Yes, we have finally updated to the new version. It was released, well, very recently of course, and we are in a battle immediately because I have been fighting wildlings with my Stormlands Hammermen troop here and I, yes, I did actually recruit a couple of companions as well. Balakwo, I remember from our previous version, so I had to pick him up. He was only 1,500, so pretty cheap, I've got to say. Oh, oh, don't tell him that though. Don't tell him that he's cheap. Uh, Balakwo, hey, hey, you, you, Balakwo, you're cheap. Okay, so I, at, le at least you guys don't have to tell him now. I, I just, I just broke, uh, broke his heart, I think, but whatever the case, we are now here, and we are... Ooh, oh, yeah, I'm using a two-handed, as you can see. This was my goal all along, and I decided to just go with it from day one. And that is actually helping us a huge amount. As you can see, we are doing so much damage. I've literally just gone for strength and agility and a little bit of charisma to get our leadership and prisoner management up. Because, believe it or not, this is actually a really good way of getting prisoners. Yeah. This is the amount that we actually fought just now. 97 wildlings, 72 were wounded. Now, there is a really, really major thing here that I'm actually really annoyed about. And usually I, I don't really get annoyed about these things. But I really wish the prisoner management skill gave you more prisoner capacity. Because right now I only have, what is it, 20 or 15? And I would love to have 50, because right now with our Hammermen, it is just absolutely insane. I mean, really, it is absolutely insane. So yes, this is all we have. This is literally all I've been fighting with. And as you can see, the money is just going up like nothing else, because look at this. We can just take leaders. Oh, yeah, we can just take some We can take some warriors. I actually don't know which is better, wildling horsemen or warriors. I think spear wives are actually pretty good, too. So I'm going to take the horsemen. I think cavalry is probably going to be better than warriors, but I have no idea. I should probably check that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release one horseman. I'm going to take another warrior. And then I'm just going to see each one separately whenever I find a ransom broker next. So hopefully that's going to be pretty good. Now, of course, we do have a couple of helms here. I actually do have a helm, but it's all 14 strength, which I've got to say is really disappointing because every single time I go to one of my companions and I'm like, hey, take this helmet. They're like, oh, but I can't lift it. I can't lift it, sir. And I'm just like, oh. What a useless individual. And then I just slap him with my with my sword hilt. And yes, things like that. But yeah, thankfully enough, we do have a huge amount of those guys, which is fantastic. So I'm very, very happy about that. Now, otherwise, we do actually have a couple of wildling groups here. But again, look at this. We have a full prisoner party already, which is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. I really wish we could have more than that and I really as you can see Brendan I've, I've actually been attempting to level him up I actually found him first which was amazing so he is already level 8 and I've been leveling his wound treatment and surgery but yeah I've tried my very best to catch up and I think this is as good a time as any to start off the series because I've also completed quite a few of the quests as well so I'm actually just going to be heading on over here just to see how many pieces of loot I can actually acquire and to show you guys a little bit of a preview of what we actually do in combat now because of course well before we had some cavalry we had some hedge knights and we had some unsullied units and we also had some other very very good infantry but I underestimated the power of the hammermen these hammermen are in my opinion probably the best unit in the game for making money and this is literally all I've been doing I literally took a band of about, I don't even know, 50 or so Stormlands units after I had, well, obviously fought a number of them for some time. Of course, uh, yes, fighting bandits is very difficult because, yeah, yeah it, 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 I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of annoying. But anyway, the point is, oh, we're stumbling and falling. Yes, of course we are. We're still doing that. And also the fact that, no, ah. Also the fact that I would very much like to kill that guy. Ah, well, never mind. Yes, so the fact is, is that we leveled up a couple of those guys. We got them to about veteran elite Stormlands level. And then we went to try and fight some wildlings. And that didn't go so well. That didn't go so well to begin with. But as they all leveled up into Hammermen, I actually started to get much better results. Even though these guys actually have no shields whatsoever, they are very, very powerful. 
And as you can see, we are just slicing and dicing through all of these guys. And I am using a, I think it's a balanced greatsword. I was able to purchase it for about 2,500 at, where was it? I think it was in the Stormlands area because I really, really wanted to have a two-handed weapon. And with the money that I was able to acquire, I just searched all over the place. But apparently, you know, when I went to go and get some more reinforcements for our Stormlands units, that was where we found the greatsword. So, yeah, it's actually doing a really, really nice job right now. But again... I have no space for any additional prisoners, which is uh, just so disappointing. It just It's just like money walking out the door. Absolutely terrible. Very, very terrible. But, yeah, apart from that, we're actually doing okay. I have a number of enterprises in various places, thanks to our prisoner management, of course. To begin with, I could only get about, I think, two prisoner management I had at the start. And that was, that was okay, because it gave us 10. And 10 is usually enough to get a pretty decent amount of money per time that you go to a ransom broker. I was able to get about 1,300 every single time. And then I obviously invested in some ironworks. Yes, an ironworks at the Weeping Town. I think it is at the Weeping Town, at least. And yes, other than that, I've just been going for oil presses. And uh, there was another ironworks that I purchased very recently. I don't believe that is actually up yet and oh yes I did make a brief stopover at the Iron Bank because it is of course 33% smaller the map it's a lot easier to actually get over the ocean and to go and visit Essos and speaking of Essos everything is just going absolutely crazy over there everyone is declaring war against everyone and well I, I don't even want to show you because it's literally I think it's already gone up because of the battle but in the text log, it literally covered the entire screen because everyone declared war against everyone and it was just an absolute massacre. So everyone is taking everything over there. I think we'll take a look at the map after this just to see what's going on there. But for the most part, yeah, I think I'm just going to sell that helm there and we're going to sell some of the worse things. Yeah, also I do have... Who is it? Graznon? I believe it's Graznon. So yeah, we're going to be speaking to him in just a second as well. In case I think he leveled up, didn't he? Hmm, I'm actually unsure, but we do have a couple of things here like heavy fur armor and some helmets here. I was hoping to actually use this, but then I thought to myself, well, why don't I just use this instead? As you can see, it's actually really nice. I mean, look at that. You can't use it on horseback. So there is that, and this is a lot better against shields, but I just felt like this was just my bag. I really, really wanted to go for that. So, okay, so some cabbages and some fruit. I think that's going to be pretty reasonable. And let's go into the tavern. Septon Gurmund is actually also here. I have not done his quest. So maybe we could, I, I guess, pick it up. I mean, I'm not particularly happy about that, I have to say. Hello, traveler. Have you seen any ransom bro- Oh, at least in Maidenpool. That is not good. That is not good at all, in actual fact. Where is Maidenpool? It is very, very far away as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, I am never going to actually find anything. Ooh, look at that. Rios has been taken by, well, Kohor? Kohor? I have no idea how to say that, but yes, whatever the case. Yeah, Bravos. Oh, yeah, so I said I, I stopped by to the Iron Bank and I deposited about 2,000. And then I thought to myself, hmm, I think I probably want to get a couple more there, so... I obviously went off and gathered a little bit more money and then I went back and deposited another 2,000 because at the moment it's giving us absolutely awful interest so I'm hopeful that as I gain more and more money I'll be able to get well more and more in the Iron Bank and as a result that would actually help us out quite a bit so Septon hello there any news from the castle yeah yes <sighs> Maester Theomir had a raven a few days ago from Eastwatch by the sea We've been told to keep a watch out for wildlings. Well, I just fought a couple of them, in actual fact. But how does this affect me? We haven't seen any wildlings here for years, but we haven't had visitors from Hill Hall. Oh, yeah, that's the Hill Hall quest. Okay, I am probably not going to be doing that right now because we've already seen that in the previous series. So, yes, if you actually do need to catch up and this is the first part that you're watching, then please click on the annotation that says playlist or check in the description for the playlist or something along those lines. But yes, anyway, we are going to be heading onward. I would love to go over to Kohor, actually, because there is apparently a quest there which we do very much want to complete. So I am very hopeful that we'll be able to do that. I was literally just trying to find a ransom broker now. So maybe we can go to Baraton and try and find that. 
Ah, uh, that would be fantastic. If we could find a ransom broker, that would be really cool because it's been bugging me the entire time I've been doing this. I did not check at any point what the warriors versus the horsemen, I believe. Yeah, the, the horsemen actually cost. So hopefully that's going to be that's going to be a good it's going to be a good idea. So let's head on into Barrison here and see if we can get a ransom broker. Maybe. No, just a traveler, a bard, a northern levy, and Sir Fells and Flowers. Oh, hello there. Yes, we know him, don't we? Yeah, that was one of our previous companions. I actually did want to try and find many of our previous companions. Oh, there we go. Ah, well, yes, I actually did find Balakwo, which is rather good. So, let's see. Yes, I have prisoners to sell. So let's have a look. Ah, horsemen are double in actual fact. They are absolutely double. Ooh, and spear wives and leaders are actually not that good. So horsemen is the way to go. So we're probably going to have to do that in future. No, I clicked on the wrong thing once again. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, look at that. 2,800 for 20. So if you just halve that, that's 1,400. So it's about the same as what I was getting for the 10 prisoners, which is really, really cool. If you can pick off... The wildlings with very small parties, like the one that we did at the end there with, with 21. And if you have about, I don't know, 40, 50 units, you should be able to do it without any noticeable casualties. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. But yeah, that's how I've been able to at least make a little bit of cash. As you can see, we have an ironworks here. I think that is actually the latest ironworks that I have. So I'm going to be making my way over to Kohor then, I suppose. And we're going to see how it goes. I really do want to try and get... A couple more units, so I might actually stop off at the Stormlands and maybe get some more Hammermen. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be Hammermen, but they're probably going to be recruits. And, yeah, it's actually quite amazing. I haven't lost any Hammermen since they became, since they all became Hammermen. It's actually pretty amazing. I'm actually unsure how that's even possible, but the Hammermen are really, really powerful. And, of course, alongside me with my two-handed sword, just swinging it about in everyone's face, you know, that's bound to distract people quite considerably. So, without further ado, I will cut away and I'll see you once we arrive in Essos. Alright, so upon landing in Essos, I decided, hey, you know what, we're just going to head over to Cohort. But actually, there are a couple of bandits here and if we can find a ransom broker, it would be really cool if we could actually take them all prisoner. We have mountain bandits and some Roin outlaws and Dothraki raiders in actual fact. So we could actually attack them, but for now, I'm just going to be leveling up the various units that we actually did gain along the way here. And this is the thing. I actually found Carver. Can you believe that? I actually found Carver in the first tavern alongside Brynden. And I actually believe he joined for free. I think he did join for free, so that's pretty cool, i got to say. Let's go for a little bit more strength for him. And some athletics, because really, I mean, he's, gonna, ugh, he's just going to die otherwise really very quickly. We also leveled up along the way here. And bear in mind that many of the quests actually gave a huge amount of experience because I did them at a lower level, so I gained much more in the way of experience there. And also fighting the wildlings did have a huge effect as well. So, yeah, we are now level 21. Well, technically we were level 20, but now we're 21. So let's have a look here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm actually unsure. See, now that's the thing. I would love to go for like a huge strength build, but then I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe we want to go for some more agility so we can run faster. That sounds like a good plan to me anyway. So let's do that. And I was also thinking of going for some foraging just because, just because I really hate going to shop for food and stuff like that. So might be an idea, but I think maybe inventory management might be better. So as you can see, I've just been absolutely pumping two-handed weapons so so much right there i literally have not put any weapon proficiencies in anything else so let's do this roinar bandits yes charge the enemy okay so bear in mind that i actually did get ambushed by a bunch of bandits twice in actual fact and then along the way when i was trying to get more stormlands units I also encountered a village that was infested by bandits, so I decided, hey, you know what, let's go and let's go and actually do that. Get a little bit of relation with the village themselves. And yes, they actually almost killed me because they were forest bandits and they have a huge, huge advantage because they have bows. And they're actually pretty good at using them in actual fact. So yes, that's actually pretty risky, especially seeing as I'm using a two-handed. I should really switch to my shield when I have that kind of opponent. But my shield is utter trash. 
It really is. It is the worst thing, just absolutely worst, since unsliced bread. I mean, basically, it is it is that bad. So, yeah, if you're ever going to use a two-handed build, you definitely want to have a nice shield. Nothing too bad, but, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm using the trashiest thing ever. So, yeah, I can't really speak. So, yeah, there is actually some formations here as you can see here so we can actually use ranks if we so desire i'm actually unsure whether we should because well do we need to i mean we're not using archers or anything and ranks is kind of well shield wall is kind of pointless because they don't have shields well some of them do the stormlands man at arms do so let's just tell everyone to charge in i don't particularly feel like the formation is very much worth it it's kind of nice to actually spread them out a little bit oh i am actually taking a lot of damage initially as you can see i need to be very very careful with playing a two-handed build because these guys are just going to absolutely destroy me otherwise. Ooh, just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Okay, come on. Let's outrange him. I can try and outrange him. Oh, he stumbled or got killed by something. Yep, definitely did get stumbled. Now, I was actually thinking of going for like a throwing weapon proficiency or something along those lines. But then it came to me, I'm only using one slot. Well, technically, well, technically two slots if you actually count the shield as well, but I'm only using one slot technically if, if you actually just count the two-handed weapon. And I thought to myself, maybe we should choose a crossbow. So we would actually use a two-handed weapon, no shield, and a crossbow and two sets of bolts. And I thought, well, that's actually pretty good because then we can actually defend, we can attack in sieges and things like that. So might be an idea. I don't know. Well, leave it in the comments if you think that's a cool idea. I, I don't know, really, because Siege Crossbows, they can be extremely damaging. We know. The previous Elias actually had some very, very good crossbow proficiency. I almost said crossbro again. Ugh, really? Yes, I almost did. So, yes, otherwise, there we go. That's pretty good. That was actually a little bit more difficult than I anticipated, I have to say. So, we're going to be taking all of these guys prisoner. Because monies, yes, money, 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 money. Okay, so, ah, yes, there we go. So, this is the shield I'm, well, this is the shield I was using. And this is the shield that we've now acquired, which is actually pretty good. So, I'm going to use two shields just in case. I actually have no idea why I'm using two shields. It's kind of redundant, isn't it? But there is the town that we need to go to. So, let's head on over there. Hopefully, they'll have a ransom broker, a slave trader, whoever. Pretty sure they will. And there's a Dothraki lair there. Probably not going to be heading over there just yet because well it's kind of in my opinion pointless and yeah here we go this is this is what happened beforehand and it's only happened now so we're doing pretty well in terms of the chronology of well the the game basically so yeah that's pretty cool but yes ah yes i also was here beforehand because i wanted to check where the quest giver was because i didn't really want to well take too much time in actually finding it so where is he is that him no now, oh, that, that, that is another companion as well, but I think it's this guy. I actually did not speak to him because I didn't really want to spoil it. Ah, yes, this is it. Yes, another adventurer come to our great city, eh? I'm looking for Valyrian steel. Tell me more. The best craftsman in the city is Elos Mott. He is the master of the Guild of Blacksmiths. If you're interested in Valyrian steel, talk to him. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, unpronounceable name person. I, I am not going to attempt to pronounce his name because I'd probably butcher it. Yes, very much so. Okay, so let's visit Elos Mott's shop. It is a large building located close to the center of the city. The double doors leading into the store are made of bronze and ironwood and decorated with a scene depicting the doom of Valyria. The doors are flanked by two identical obsidian statues of a man with the head of a goat. Oh, well... At least it's not Vargo Hoat, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, if this is your first episode, that is actually very confusing, so I apologize. But yes, you need to watch episode 20 of The Clash of Kings 2.1 to understand that joke. Yeah, I'm plugging myself again, and not in that way, thank you. So, let's enter the shop, and we're going to be talking to this very, very smart-looking man. Look at that, look at his pants. His pants actually have... A lot of holes in. His shoes could use an upgrade, but he has a very, very nice shirt on, as you can see. Look at that medallion. Hmm. Well, whatever the case. Yes, I am Elos Mott, leader of the Blacksmith's cohort, most gifted of all the craftsmen in the world. Welcome to my shop. He's very humble, isn't he? 
Ah, Setheris or Ketheris said you could tell me about Valyrian steel. Ah, the bane of my existence. Everyone wants to know about Valyrian steel. Why, I ask, when one could also learn about tinted metals, armor strong enough to withstand the blow of a warhammer, or even the precious substance the alchemists call wildfire. But no, always Valyrian steel. Travelers and adventurers, princes and archons, they all come asking about the steel of Valyria. What would you have me tell you that no one does not already know? Valyrian steel is precious. A drunk in a tavern could tell you that. Valyrian steel is indestructible. The same drunk would tell you the same truth. Valyrian steel is the rarest metal in the world, worth lordships and fiefdoms. All the drunks in the world know this. Well, I am not a drunk and I do not know it, so thank you. Thank you very much for that insult. But can I, the master of blacksmiths, reforge Valyrian steel? Yes, I can. Very humble once again. Can I make new Valyrian steel? Well, time will soon tell. Remember the fate of Maester Paul, and do not inquire into my work, or the work of my colleagues. The City Watch will have you if you do, and so will the Disciples of the Black Goat. Oh, I thought I would just say that in the way of a ghost story. But you can reforge Valyrian steel? Yes, I can. Any member of the guild can. However, we do not provide the steel. Hmm, okay. Even if we had such materials at hand, Tywin Lannister had or has already paid us good solid gold to reserve it for him. No, Elias, I will gladly reforge a blade for you, but you will need to gather the materials yourself. We once forged a new blade for the Lysine nobleman, Moredo Roger. Okay, I may be saying that completely incorrectly, but, well, you know me. Truth, he called it. It was forged from four daggers of Valyrian steel, and the cost was enough to outfit an entire fleet of ships. Gather enough daggers, and I will be able to forge for you a new blade of pure, indestructible Valyrian steel, whether you have a king, a prince, or even a dragon lord. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, the City of Sorcerers Part 1, that is. And so, with that, I am going to be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching our return to A Clash of Kings. Obviously, it's the new version, and I will see you next time.